In this video, we will be taking you through the transparency notice, giving some background on when and how the notice is to be used, and what information needs to be included when publishing one. The transparency notice is required to provide transparency on contracts intended to be awarded under direct award provisions in the Procurement Act. The function of the transparency notice is to inform the market that a contracting authority intends to direct award a contract and to ensure that there is transparency relating to this decision. It provides an opportunity for interested parties to scrutinise whether grounds for direct award are being applied correctly. The notice is compulsory for all direct award procedures conducted under sections 41 and 43 of the Act, but is not required under section 42, which covers direct awards to protect life or for user choice contracts. A full list of direct award justifications can be found in Schedule 5 of the Procurement Act. This notice is similar in its purpose to the Voluntary Ex Ante Transparency or VEAT notice under the EU regime. However, where the VEAT notice is published voluntarily and triggers a standstill period just before the contract is entered into, the transparency notice is mandated, except for in cases of direct award user choice contracts. The transparency notice is used in conjunction with the contract award notice, but unlike with the VEAT process, the transparency notice does not start the standstill period. The contract award notice is required prior to the contracting authority entering into the contract, which will, in most cases, start the standstill period. There is, however, no set time period between the publication of the transparency notice and the publication of the contract award notice. The following information must be included when publishing a transparency notice, though please note that authorities should refer directly to the regulations and associated guidance, as this information is only being provided as a general guide to the notice requirements. The required information is, information about the contracting authority, the title of the procurement, the unique identifier for the procurement, and in the case of a procurement where there has been a switch to a direct award from another procedure, in accordance with section 43 of the Act, the unique identifier allocated to the procurement before the switch to direct award. The unique identifier for the contract if it is known when the transparency notice is published, information relating to the subject matter of the contract, whether the contract is a special regime contract, and if so, whether it is a concession, a light touch, or a utilities contract, whether the contract is being awarded directly to a supplier that is not an excluded supplier, because a direct award justification applies in accordance with Section 41 of the Act, and the direct award justification in Schedule 5 of the Act which applies, as well as an explanation of why the contracting authority considers that it applies or whether the contract is being awarded directly to a supplier that is an excluded supplier because the contracting authority considers that there is an overriding public interest in awarding the contract in accordance with Section 41 of the Act, and the offence or other event as listed in Schedule 6 of the Act by which the supplier is an excluded supplier, as well as which of the listed grounds constituting an overriding public interest in Section 41 of the Act applies and an explanation of why the contracting authority considers that it applies in this case. If a Minister of the Crown considers it necessary, the Minister may, by regulations, provide that specified public contracts may be awarded as if a direct award justification applies in order to protect human, animal or plant life, or health, or to protect public order or safety. Where this is the case, the contracting authority must confirm that the contract is being awarded directly to a supplier under regulations made by a minister as per section 42 of the Act. The contracting authority must also provide the title and registration number of the statutory instrument containing those regulations. Information on whether the contract is being awarded directly to a supplier that is not an excluded supplier by virtue of section 43 of the Act, which covers switching to a direct award as well as the reason the contracting authority considers that there were no suitable tenders or requests to participate and why it considers that an award and the competitive tendering procedures covered in section 19 of that act is not possible in the circumstances. Whether the contract is being awarded by reference to lots and if so the title of each lot and the distinct number given to each lot by the contracting authority. 
the total estimated value of the public contract, whether the contracting authority considers that the contract or any lot forming part of the contract may be particularly suitable to be awarded to a small and medium-sized enterprise or to a non-governmental organisation that is value-driven and which principally reinvests its surpluses to further social, environmental or cultural objectives, often referred to as a third sector organisation. A description identifying any risk that the contracting authority considers could jeopardise the satisfactory performance of the contract, but, because of its nature, may not be addressed in the contract as awarded and a description of any risk that may require a subsequent modification to the contract under paragraph 5 of Schedule 8 of the Act, which covers modification of contracts following the materialization of a known risk. Information for selected suppliers for the contract, including the supplier's name, the unique identifier for the supplier, or in the case of a direct award based on urgency grounds, where the supplier does not have a unique identifier, unique information such as a company's house number, and the supplier's postal and email address. The estimated date when the contract will be entered into. Where the contract is a framework. The term of the framework. Whether the framework provides for fees to be charged to a supplier in accordance with the framework, and if so, details of the fixed percentage by which they will be charged in accordance with section 45 of the Act details of the contracting authorities entitled to award contracts in accordance with the framework, whether by listing the names of those authorities or by describing categories of authorities.